<laughs> Jan, what what do you think? Thank you very much for joining us. Are, are Nagelsmann and Tottenham a, a good fit or not? Well, I think what Rafa's saying is there's something with, with Germans going to English football. There is something romantic. There is someone coming home. Football's coming home. Even a German can say that. Uh, but, yeah, I, I got a feeling yesterday when I saw Kante was fired. I was, I was tweeting saying that Nagelsmann was fired because Tuchel was available. And now Kante was fired because Nagelsmann was available. <laughs> but it was, not, it was not to be. So, no, I'm... I'm it, it can happen uh, because I think for, for Nagelsmann, I always use that Formula One uh, metaphor where there, has, there, there have to be seats available for him. Where should he go at the moment? He won't go to any German club, that's for sure. Uh, Real Madrid, I think that Real Madrid, if, if, if their reputation is broken for him or is something damaged with him, is that he, he can't handle a big star. So say that is a saying. For Nagelsmann, so and maybe there is, is also the feeling that that he could not get Müller and Neuer and all the old boys out. So then he's going to Real Madrid with Toni Kroos, with with Modric, with Benzema. I don't think so. I think that then he need more experience to get that. So he can end up in in summer with with seeing the options, the seats available, and maybe Tottenham will will be the the best for him and. Uh, I, I was in a discussion yesterday with a friend of mine, and we, we discussed. I, I've followed Nagelsmann since Alex Rosen said at Hoffenheim. I played with him in Hoffenheim. He said, We got this guy, he's 27, he's the best you'll ever see, and he will be turned into a fantastic manager. But when you go to Bayern and, and you kind of fail in the terms you get fired, there's always some time to, to kind of maybe adjust your career. What, what type of character? Is he, Raf? Because at the age that he is, the the assumption is he should actually relate to players very well, g- given given how young he is. And yet, as Jan has, has already alluded to, there were issues supposedly between him and the Bayern dressing room. It's hard to generalize because there were some players, and we've heard from them in, in recent days, who generally liked him. And got on very well with him. Leon Goretzka came out saying how much he enjoyed working with Leon Kimi. Joshua Kimi, she was his main confidant. Um, basically, said, "Yeah, one of the top three player, top three coaches he ever worked with in his career." Um, others, though, I think, wanted a bit more leadership. Wanted somebody slightly more experienced, slightly more. Um, perhaps, perhaps discreet Nagelsmann I think because he was still relatively young and hadn't made it as a footballer and now was in his big job I think tried to maybe enjoy the occasion a little bit too much at times um, driving big cars in Munich I mean things that maybe from an English perspective they're kind of ridiculous to, to mention because of course a coach would drive a big car but in, in Germany and even in Munich you have to still be a little bit careful and Jan can relate to this as a as a player, as a footballer, what you do, what you drive, how you dress, how you behave in the public, people look at you and think you should behave sort of in a way that fits your role and your position. And being a buyer manager is not just a job; it is almost sort of being uh, in an office, and you know you are in charge of this organization that's looked um, and that, that exercises uh, and excites millions and millions of people. And I think Nagelsmann found it difficult perhaps to understand that dimension of it. And some players found it difficult to maybe see in him the leader that they that they craved. Um, I don't think that was the main reason for why things went awry. Um, I think that the club really struggled to explain uh, that part of the story very well because it wasn't a clear cut of him losing the dressing room the way uh, Ancelotti had really la- lost the dressing room, for example, or Niko Kovac. This was a more nuanced picture and ultimately went down to something that the club, I think, fo- felt uncomfortable to discuss, which is that he just didn't get the most out of this team. Um, and they wanted to be nice, I think, about him as a coach and didn't want to say anything bad about his the way he did his job. So they didn't really go into massive details beyond saying, The performances were up and down the whole time. The performances are not in line with the potential of the squad. And basically, 
the accusation was that he just should have done a lot better with his team, which looking at the table and the Champions League position, you think, what are they talking about? But if you've seen every single game uh, or most of the games that the way that me and Jan would have done, you saw that every single game almost throughout his time there, Bayern had bad moments, had a lack of dominance, um, too many close cut games, too many draws, too many defeats for a team that at least Bayern believe should really dominate the Bundesliga in a way that we haven't seen since since Pep Guardiola. And ultimately, he fell short of that maybe, maybe overblown expectation. But Bayern always have these expectations. So what? you just have to you just have to live with it. Well, I, I, Jan, I'm going to have to follow up on Rusk or you, with you. I, I would be one of those people going, what are they talking about? Just like like literally on the numbers. They're second in the Bundesliga. They're a point off Borussia Dortmund, right? You can't win a title every year by 20 points or whatever. Sometimes t- other teams get better. But uh, amongst all of that, they've scored 72 goals in their 25 Bundesliga games. They've got a goal difference of plus 45. So the next best is Borussia Dortmund at, at, at plus 24. And they're in the quarterfinals of, of the Champions League, having knocked out Paris Saint-Germain. I mean, what more is wanted? Yeah, I think it's it's hard for Rafa and me to find the right words to explain <laughs> the, posi- no, the position of Bayern because Bayern is so much more than a football club. There are some football clubs who try to have that motto and then there are like proper corrupt clubs like everybody else. But having said that, uh, it's the fact that Bayern, I was thinking of is I was following, I, I saw them, I saw... Uh, uh, the uh, the press conference and I went into I saw the whole all over again because it was quite interesting to see how do we do the analysis of Bayern because Bayern is the, maybe the biggest brand Germany got and may they compete with Adidas and Hugo Boss and all those kind of of brands and then I was thinking when I, I was looking at Oliver Kahn and Salah Hamasic in my opinion, doing a communication job that was not even close to Conference League. And that is something that we have to understand with Julian Nagelsmann. So if you come into Bayern, it's a, it's a family club in all terms because Uli Hoen has been there since he was 27. Karl-Heinz Rummenigge has been there. They're always looking for former players, a model I love. The CEO is Oliver Kahn, a Bayern legend. Salah Hamisic played at the club. They had Kovac. They had a lot of uh, of a former players in the special position. But to be the coach of Bayern Munich is so much more than just being a football coach. It's so much more than have football results. And what is interesting, and, and Rafa will I, I would get, will get, I agree with this, is that Salah Hamasic said 21 months ago that this is the man who will take us into the new future. This was like them. They took over after Rummenig and Hernes. This is the new coach. This is the, the new coach of a new generation after the only coaches they've had there that ever happened with, more or less, is you, Pinekis or Otma Hitzfeld. And they were like 60 plus. So there's something about the expectation being a buyer manager yes it's silly to talk about his cars yes it's silly to talk about his suits yes it's silly to talk about this he is now dating a journalist who worked for Bill Saito it's all rubbish but it's a part of the soap opera Bayern Munich and this FC Hollywood we we love to say that we love to I follow this club since I saw my first game 75 when they beat Leeds United 2-0 should never have done that Leeds got, should have a goal was not going for offside sorry I'm going all the way there but that is Bayern and there is something about Bayern the expectation to a coach there you can imagine today is the big thing who is the mole who is the spy in the camp I mean, it's not like in England you will talk about Liverpool or Manchester United and you will think, who is the spy? That's what they're doing in Germany right now. I think if we bring it back to the on-pitch performances and and your question, Mark, I think what's what's instructive to understand is that Bayern cannot tolerate failure. And failure would mean not winning the, the Bundesliga. That would seen as that would be seen as an absolute disaster. When it last happened in 2012, and Bayern also finished runners up in the in the cup and the Champions League, 
Jupp Heynckes came very close to resigning because he felt the club don't really fully trust me. In the end, it went a very different way. Magat was fired after winning two doubles. Niko Kovac was fired after winning the double. Ancelotti was fired after winning the double in his second season. Uh, Nagelsmann was fired after winning the league in his first, in the second season. Why? Because Bayern will not wait until something bad happens and then react. They will. They want to anticipate before things happen and have and and be so ruthless, almost like those precogs in uh, what was that uh, um, Tom Cruise uh, film, uh, by Philip K. Dick, where they they see the crime before it ha- happens. This is Bayern. Okay, they they want to punish the guy before he's even done anything, say, <laughs> okay, this it looks as if you might not win the league, it looks as if you might blow the cup and the Champions League all next month. We're not going to wait those 10 days until you blow all these three things. We're going to do this now. And we have in Tuchel someone who we believe will do a better job. I'll come on to Tuchel with Jan in a minute. I know, I know you you have to leave, Russ. So ve- just very quickly on this, can Bayern not have a head coach who is too much of an individual. Is that is that a problem? If he delivers titles, they will swallow any pill as it did with Guardiola. There was a lot of things that didn't work with Guardiola and the club, but the football was amazing. And they, I think despite some reservations, would have loved to, to keep him. And he is, of course, the longest serving Bayern managers in recent years with the full three-year tenure. So um, it's not about that. It's about winning. And then everything is on top. But Nagelsmann's problem, and I think in that respect, they were factually correct, was that you had these up and down periods. Every season, um, every half of the season had a period where suddenly Bayern don't win four or five games. And that makes the whole club super nervous. They just cannot handle it. And their reaction is always, okay, who is the other guy we can get in that makes sure we won't have these terrible four weeks where we don't win? And because Tuchel was available, and I think that is key, they were felt comfortable pushing the button. If there's no Tuchel in the background, I think they will continue to say we're backing Julian and whatever, and maybe see what happens. But because Tuchel was available now, this happened now. 